my name is Farrell Styers. I'm uh, an American who is a transplant here in uh, Ghent, Belgium. Uh, and I am the head brewer and co-founder of Strom, which is a, a microbrewery nestled kind of inside the Ghent city center, but, but uh, kind of often one of the residential neighborhoods here. I founded it with my co-founder, Carl, uh, just, just about a year and a half ago. So we, we got a building, we kind of came up with the whole concept and started uh, building everything out and getting all the gear and all of that. And then we got the doors open nine months ago, something along those lines with our first beer. But now, now I think we have uh, 10 beers out and more to, I got a brand new one in the tank back there. So at least 11 and more to come after that, of course. What's your background? What made you decide to set up a Belgian brewery in Ghent? Uh, yeah. Um, well, my background professionally, honestly, is in research and social research. I it had nothing to do at all with brewing. I have a degree in international affairs in the Middle East um, and, and did that kind of work for many years and lived all over the world. I lived in, uh, in the Middle East, in, in Egypt and in Iraq, and then in Central Asia, in Kyrgyzstan. And I met some great Belgians there and Wow. One thing led to another, and my wife and I ended up moving to Belgium. I'd always been kind of a, a beer nut, and a, I dabbled in home brewing. I wasn't a particularly great home brewer or even a very committed home brewer, but it was something I kind of did on the side. But I come originally from Colorado, which is one of the, if anyone knows kind of the American craft beer scene, you know that Colorado is like one of the focal points. It's one of the great like heartlands of the American craft beer movement. And so I was exposed to it a lot there and from early on because it got started in Colorado qu quite early, even in the 80s. Um, one of the most iconic uh, American craft breweries was actually a place called New Belgium. And uh, so yeah, I was exposed to it since long before I was even legally allowed to drink there. Uh, so anyway, I landed in Belgium after years and years of living in kind of beer deserts, I suppose, and um, started getting back into it. And uh, I was actually, uh, I, I was a, a part of a, a nano brewery here in, in Ghent called Humboldt and Gauss. So we had a, it was all official, it was all, you know, licensed by the state and everything, but it was a little like 150 liter uh, system we would brew on and very qu quickly we were running out of capacity and we even we needed to move and whatever so then we started contract brewing which is really common here in Belgium all these uh, beer firms as they're known uh, but rather than just doing kind of the typical contract brewing I was insistent on not just being there for our beers being brewed but uh, I started just volunteering at these breweries and just pestering them for information and just following along and brewing with them. And I did that enough and consistently enough that I, I really started to learn my way around it. And I got to brew at some, some really cool uh, breweries and learned a ton and I, I of course had this this vision for something bigger that I wanted to build and then yeah the, the old nano brewery kind of folded the partners were going separate ways you know life got in the way breakups and uh, burnouts and PhDs and uh, you know all the complications of life and I was the kind of the last one standing who was still really committed to like building something in in beer uh, and I was still doing research that was paying the bills. Um, and then Carl, this longtime friend of mine, the guy who I had met in Kyrgyzstan. Ker Carl, last name? Sorry. Uterhagen. So I, I, he's the one who, who, when we were starting our business in Kyrgyzstan, he was out there starting a business there. And so we became good friends. Never had anything to do with beer, um, never in business together or anything, but uh, suddenly the, the corona crisis hit 
and we were all stuck at home and Carl looked me up and said, you know, I've been, he was restless. He was looking for a new project. He'd been in the art world for many years. He had a small gallery here in Ghent and, uh, and in Brussels and had, yeah, he's not an artist, but he's a, he's a collector himself, but he's more than that. He's just like a, a passionate, like kind of observer and player in the Belgian art scene. And, and uh, he approached me and said, I'm looking for a new project and you're always talking about this craft beer idea. Let's, let's go for a walk, let's have a talk. And uh, yeah, we just, we had this long talk and we started envisioning this way that we could bring together kind of his background as a lifelong Chantanar, and he's a, a savvy entrepreneur. He's, uh, he's one of the original founding board members of Energent, a renewable energy cooperative here, and he's run some other businesses. But also he's got this, this background in art, and we started seeing how we could bring that together. Um, all, all his network here in Ghent and his experience here with all of that, and then my kind of vision for uh, craft beer, very influenced, of course, by the American craft beer scene, but because all my kind of more formal brewing experience was here in Belgium, also very influenced by kind of the Belgian traditions and, and things. And so we, um, well, we clearly let it spiral out of control because here we are sitting in the brewery that we built. Uh, what's the uh, your output per year, r roughly, or what do you, how much? Well, you we because we haven't even done a full year yet. It's it's tough to say, but right now we're producing about ten hectos a week. So, yeah, multiply that out, and you can arrive roughly at, at where we are. But um, who's buying your beer? Ah, well, we, it's, I mean, we're, we're quite Ghent centric just because we're, we're here and what we find is we, so we've got this little tasting room and this shop in the brewery. And what we find is that, uh, that's frankly the best marketing tool we could have when people come in here and see, you know, these guys are really doing this, then that's what sells the beer you know on, on any given day if a, if a customer comes in they could find me back there brewing or canning or kegging or um, more likely than anything cleaning because that's what you end up doing being a brewer is just being a glorified janitor frankly but uh but you know they, they really they see that that this is not just um we're not just some beer firm we're not just some guys that slap a sticker with some cutesy name on it and call it our beer like we're being really thoughtful about this and and quite committed you know we quit our jobs um, we we put a lot of our own personal money into it and and took a really big gamble and so uh, so what we find is like we've got more customers in Ghent than anywhere else because they're the most likely to come in here and see and then once they see it and feel it they're more likely to want our beer. Uh, but we're around, we've got some, some bars and shops in Antwerp, in Brussels, uh, now just got into uh, Wallonia for the first time, a distributor down there. Um, but we do a, a great deal of our business just goes through our little shop that's here in the brewery. So we, we, uh, we just have a, a few fridges and uh, you know a cash register, and people just come in for their their beers to go to to why well, either they're buying beer to to keep at home or even they're just grabbing some beers while they wander off to the park or whatever. All right. <laughs> What's your flagship beer and would you say your style is? is are you fresh well, your flagship beer right now? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's tough right now. Like we've, we've got, uh, I think, seven beers now that we have been brewing several times. Uh, so those are, could perhaps all be called flagships. By far our best seller, and if there's a beer we're known for, it's uh, Belgian Stars and Stripes, which is a West Coast IPA. I joke often that it's my most 
unashamedly American beer that I make. It's very influenced by the, the beers I kind of grew up around in Colorado. So all these big, assertive uh, American hops, um, really like citrus and kind of uh, these, these bold kind of fruity hop flavors. It's um, pretty well bittered. If I have any, uh, this, this is maybe overstating it to call it a philosophy, but if I have any philosophy in brewing, it's that I believe beers should be properly bittered and properly dried out. I don't like sticky, sweet, under attenuated beers, and I don't like beers with no bittering at all. It doesn't need to be, you know, peel the enamel off your teeth bitter, but it, it needs something back there to kind of uh, straighten things up and dry it out. So this, this beer definitely captures that. And also, I guess uh, the first beer, I think a long time ago, that's why I recognize it was Love when it first came uh, Yeah, the Love Supreme. Yeah. We did the. Becoming a big style. Well, we fads, did a, a coffee up. IPA. Yes, and a coffee was, IPA. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't black, which is shocking to a lot of yeah, people. Yeah, that's what I put it in. So. And that was one that, that uh, we were approached by a, a band, quite a, a, a very big, very successful band that I knew very well um, called The Descendants. We just got really lucky that their tour manager happens to live here in the neighborhood. And he'd come into the brewery, was a big fan of the beer, and he hooked us up with the band. And they requested specifically a coffee IPA. And when I first heard that, I thought like, the hell am I gonna do with, like why would you put coffee in an IPA? It's such a weird combination. But then the more I thought about it, the more I thought like, oh, this could be a really interesting challenge as a brewer. And it's, it's something that I probably left to my own devices never would have come up with. So I thought like, actually that's, that's kind of interesting. And, um, and I was thrilled with how it came out. I, uh, I, I went to the roaster, we, so, so we've got a roaster, Van de Kerkhove, that's uh, here in Ghent. Really amazing guy, beautiful roastery, really thoughtful with this coffee, so I knew that would be a, a great choice. And, and we explained the project to him and we explained, I explained that, you know, I wanted something that was an ultra light roast, something really kind of fruit forward, you know, in, in some coffees you get these really toffee and caramel and these, all these dark notes. But with this, I wanted something more like red fruit and something really bright, maybe a bit uh, acidic and as little roast as possible and as little of the kind of vegetal sometimes with coffee you can get this like green pepper vegetable flavor i didn't want any of that and he he understood immediately he recommended a specific bean and a specific roast and i have to say it it matched better than i could have expected and what else have you got brewing in your tanks coming up for oh beer lovers? we so we have the the love supreme that's our raspberry sour that one has done really well this summer based on the Berliner Weisse, so low in alcohol, 4%, really tangy, but really, and, and very fruit forward. So you really get the raspberry, but not at all sweet. It's really tart and dry. Uh, we, we have a, a spiced kveik, so a, a, a bigger 7% beer, just, just pale malt, a really simple kind of farmhouse beer, but then we, we spice it with Sichuan pepper doesn't come out spicy at all. It comes out really floral and herbal. Uh, we've, got a, we've got a stout that's got a bit of cacao nibs in it, although it's, it's mostly just all those uh, roasted malts that are backing that up. But that one we really push in the, the winter. So right now it's, uh, we've got a bit left over that we're still selling on the side. Uh, so with the, the artwork, which is really, uh, I can't overstate what a like, central component that is to the brewery. My, my partner Carl, as I said, he worked I in the art world for many years and he's just hyper passionate about it. And so the way we work is we find artists, we find artworks and artists that we want to feature on our labels. We never commission a work for a can. So it's not like we tell someone like, can you 
make an illustration for a can. No, we, we find works that already inspire us or artists that we really want to work with. And then we, yeah, we approach them and see if they're, they're interested. Uh, if they are, the way we work then is we, yeah, we build out a label and then for every can that we sell, we pay them a small proceed. It's admittedly a very small proceed and no, no artist is going to build their career on our humble little brewery, but it's our, you know, small way of uh, getting to do something for the art world and, and even on our labels. So we, we feature the artwork, but we even we commit quite a big part of the label to uh, talking about the artist themselves. So rather than talking about the beer, we figure the beer tells its own story. You know, you get to pour it out and drink it. So with the artist, we want to explain a bit who they are. And we always work with kind of, I don't know how to better explain it, but like real artists. So people who are really, um, it may not be their only job, but people who are really committed artists who have been featured in galleries or, um, you know, they're doing exhibits and they're, they're really, you know, active, active artists. Um, and how about the uh, renewable and what yeah yeah so we we found this building w which is it, it, it's well for Ghent for inside the the Ghent city limits it's actually an enormous space there are not many spaces like this left uh, so we got really lucky there it was just a big old brick warehouse uh, but our our brew house itself, when we moved it in, it's all electric. And we realized we had this great advantage that then we could pay the, I mean, it costs us a bit extra, but we can pay that extra subscription to get all our electricity from renewables. So it means all our beer is brewed without fossil fuels. So, and, and that's actually quite, in, in brewing, it's actually quite rare. Most kettles will be gas fired or steam fired and that steam almost always comes from gas also. So we even went as far as, as calling the, the utilities and they came in and capped off our gas line. So they just removed it and shuttered it. So everything, all our cooling, all our brewing, everything is done with uh, renewables. And we also, you, you'll notice something that for Belgium is, is I think quite exceptional. We put all our beer in cans. And that's also because we really believe in it as an ecological package. I think it's one of, it, it's not perfect, but it is one of the most ecological food packages in the world, especially in a country like Belgium, where recycling rates are, are incredibly high. And all of that goes straight back into the supply chain. And aluminum, unlike many other products, once you melt it down, it's just as good as virgin aluminum, and so you can just keep that circular uh, movement going, and, and so we really like Where that. now? Do you expand? Do you maintain this? I mean, it's still early days. Yeah. I mean, right now we're just What's scrapping your to... Are you huge or middle? Or no. I mean, a real dream is that this thing needs to be sustainable and when i say sustainable i mean that in both senses like in uh in the ecological sense so that we there's a lot we can still do to be a a better steward to the environment and kind of be just a, a smarter business but a lot of that you know takes time and costs money um but it, we also need to be sustainable in a business sense you know this this thing uh i've got a mortgage i've got kids you know that we've we've all got expenses and lives to lead so we need to make sure the business is really uh, running and frankly we want to grow enough to make sure those two things are possible and to have that margin so that we can do the really exciting stuff we would love to get even more involved in with creatives whether it's uh, artists or musicians or even others there are all sorts of cool projects we can imagine we want to do more things like like we've got a project right now with the the city with the neighborhood where we've got people growing hops in 
both public and private spaces all through the city as a way to help green the environment. Um, and then we'll do, we'll have everyone bring those in and we'll do a big uh, fresh hop beer with the whole neighborhood. But you can see how if we can build this bigger and more sustainable uh, business, it really facilitates those kind of projects. Because if you have then the, I mean, not, not much. No one goes into beer to get rich. Or if, or if that's your objective, like you're an absolute fool because there's about a million other things you could get rich at in a more effective way than, <laughs> than brewing. Um, but we, ju we do need to make the money to like give us the, the, the capacity to do those sorts of fun projects on the side. What's the again beer craft scene like? Oh, it's, it's great. It's quite small, I have to say, for Ghent. You know, if you look at a map of Belgium and especially Flanders, you've got this little triangle of, you know, Brussels, Antwerp, Ghent. And those are the big cities where kind of everything's happening, all the, all the culture, all the, the big universities. Uh, I don't know. It's, it's just where stuff's happening. And somehow, for the longest time, like, Ghent didn't have much to say about beer. The interesting stuff with beer was happening, you know, in Brussels with like Cantillon and uh, Trefontaine and then, and then Brussels Beer Project and then et cetera, et cetera. And also Antwerp had uh, these kind of historic breweries, but then some, some kind of newer craft things popping up. And Ghent was, uh, yeah, not much, but now the last five years, you've seen some things really pop up, uh, I think it almost goes without saying, but the guys up at Dock are doing amazing stuff. And they have been big supporters of ours. Janos, the head brewer there, is a very close friend of mine. We've even done now some traveling through Europe to like weird Lithuanian farmhouse festivals off in the wilderness and, and stuff. So w what they're doing, I think, has, has really helped. But there are also some kind of um, some smaller projects. You've got Braubar brewing at a really small scale uh, just for, for their bar. And they're doing some really cool stuff. And, and now with us and, and even some, some little, some kind of gypsy brewers and contract brewers here, um, you, you really see Ghent is, is on the beer map now. We're even working on a, a small project with those two, Brau Bar and Doc that I just mentioned. Uh, where we can do boat tours because all of us happen to be right along the water in Ghent. And so you can get on this boat and you get some beers on the boat and you get to go to all three breweries. And at each brewery, you'd get a different explanation about a different uh, kind of part of uh, the brewing uh, science. And, uh, and I think I'm really looking forward to that.